All right, ladies and gentlemen, tanks and helicopters. Um, something important that I need to address today is something which really pisses me off. What Dewalt has done to tools. Um, so as you know, Dewalt has done away with the 18 volt nickel cadmium pack. That really pisses me off. Why? Because nickel cadmium is not as susceptible to damage or intolerances of high and low temperatures. It's tougher. It has a higher torque output. It's just a all around better, you know, utility or industrial grade battery. Sure, it's got its, uh, you know, its problems like uh, battery memory, but the newer NICADs aren't nearly as bad with that. Um, you can also even get nickel metal hydride. Um, hydride, hydrate, whatever. Anyway, you can get nickel metal batteries that uh, don't have the flaw of the um, memory uh, susceptibility, but at the same time, they also have a higher capacity, and they have the same torque and the same high and low temperature tolerance, whereas you can't buy these anymore. I, I can't buy these anymore. Dewalt discontinued them. Like, this company is supposed to be masters of, like, you know, um, tools, and they didn't do their battery research. They thought, well, all the contractors want lighter batteries, so we're just going to make these lithium-ion cells, which cannot take high and low temperatures. Um, you can't torque them as high as you can an 18-volt cell. I mean, like, they're just they're stupid. These, this is just a really stupid design. Um, this, I hate the lithium cells. And everybody argues vehemently with me about the lithium cells, saying, no, it's a better battery, it's lighter, it's higher capacity, blah, blah. Dude, seriously, when you try to push these things hard and you're in the field, say that you've driven, like, half a kilometer to a tower up on top of a, a mountainside or something, and, you know, you're working on that, and your batteries are all flaking out on you. You're going to get really pissed off. And then here's the other thing that really burns me. Look at this monstrosity. This is supposed to adapt this to work on a standard Dewalt drill. Look at this. That is friggin' ridiculous. They could have built this a million different ways that would have been better than this, okay? Not only that, but watch this, okay? I had to modify this to be able to get the torque out of it that I need. Because if you put, like, I don't know, uh, 20 or 30 pounds of torque on this uh, battery with this adapter, it'll actually cut out. But watch this. <laughs> With my modification, it doesn't cut out like that, right? And I had to modify this stupid adapter because it's just a really dumb design, and I know why they did, and I'll explain in a minute. Whereas this, see all that torque and it doesn't stop? So here's what they've done, okay? It's as simple as bypassing the current limiter inside of this thing, okay? It, this is... And you know what? The lithium-ion guys and battery nuts are going to, like, freak out and be like, you're going to blow yourself up! Well, maybe if uh, Dewalt weren't being butts about this whole situation and getting rid of uh, the NICAD packs, maybe why not just replace them with nickel metal hydride? Or, you know, might be a smarter idea. But no. No, we're just going to say we're going to do away with that entire tool line and replace it with the uh, lithium, lithium ion packs, you know, because, you know, just fuck you basically, right? So here's what I had to do to make this work, and I'll show you the difference of before and after. Here's the pack right here. So this, this is the current limiter pack, and here's your FETs on the side of it, okay? So if you look closely, you'll see an extra wire soldered on on either side, okay? I'll show you in a second. And what I've done is I basically bypassed this pack. Okay, so let's get a little bit of heat here, and I'll, I'll take off the negative for you, and I'll show you. 392, I should be able to pop that guy off now. Okay. This is one of those really grinds my gears things, you know? Don't force me to change tools that have proven reliable to me for decades, okay? Like, seriously, that's just ignorant. Very, very, very ignorant. All right, so this, for this experiment here, I need a little bit of heat shrink. Um, or maybe I'll just put some tape on it because I'm being lazy. Here. Let's put a little bit of tape on it and that should be good enough. This is just basically so that uh, it doesn't short out, right? So we'll go like this. And then we'll get another little piece right here. Those are my leads, by the way. 
I literally just used some 18 gauge wire, which is decent. It's good enough, realistically. Okay, so both those wires are now put aside. They are disconnected, as you can see. We are now going to go through the current limiter pack. Okay, so there we go. I'm just going to put a couple of screws in here just to... This is a quick and dirty demonstration for you guys. That's why I'm not going to put much in, uh, effort into it. And this wasn't the video that I intended to make tonight, but uh, I had to show you guys this because there's going to be those of you out here who suffer the exact same hell and need to know how to do this. All right, so we've done this now, okay? So now let's put this on here. All right, put on our stupid lithium cell. Oh, look, it works great, but watch. Oh, what's this? Oh, what's that? Oh, gee, I can't put more than 15 to 18 pounds of torque on it without the fucking li limiter kicking it out. How stupid is that? Like, seriously. So, again, here's how you fix that, okay? Dewalt, get your friggin' heads together. For this reason, it makes me want to switch to Milwaukee. Like, I have, like, probably about, God, $1,200 worth of uh, Dewalt tools, okay? Because I've loved Dewalt, and I've relied on them for a very long time. When they start, you know, ditching their customer loyalty in favor of, like, hype, that just pisses me right off. Okay, I'm going to solder this back on here. Make sure it's a nice clean joint. Next one on here. And also look at how tiny that little wire is there. Like, what the hell is that? Really? Seriously? Okay, come on. This is hard to get into here. And you burn your fingers doing this, by the way, if you're like me. All right, here we go. There we go. Okay, so that's on there. It's on there real good. I'm just going to make sure this guy's on here pretty good. There we go. All right, we're on there. Okay, so now I can reassemble this pack, okay? So now I've routed the wires. I've just soldered them on here, positive to positive, negative to negative, and then I've routed them up through the center, as you can see. So, um, yeah, we'll put this back together now, and you'll see the difference. All right. First things first, we'll put the... Uh, this is the uh, locking, oh, wrong one. Where's the, there it is. That's the locking screw for the uh, head, the connectors for the drill here. And by the way, something which I strongly recommend, if, especially if you're a WISP or a uh, small telecommunications operator of any kind, is learn to maintain your tools, buddy. Um, I actually have a dealer in town here, Larry Electric Motors, I go to, and they service my tools for me. So if I burn brushes, they'll replace the brushes for me. They'll replace motors for me. Um, they do all the maintenance on my uh, tools, but I do my own simple maintenance as well to maintain my equipment, right? Okay, so now, resolder. Let's do this again. Stupid looking thing. Look at that. That's just in... Oh, look, it's just stupid, okay? Here we go. I can't work it out now. So if you guys were like me and have a fortune in Dewalt tools and have to use this stupid abomination of nature uh, to run your tools on the new battery packs that they're forcing you to use, yes, there is hope. You just have to bypass the current limiter. Now, to tell you why they have the current limiter. <clears throat> lithium packs, lithium cells, depending on the ones that they use, don't have the ability to export as much current as nickel metal hydride or um, NICAD um, cells. So you can actually push too much torque on these guys. Like, uh, say if you're um, augering through 2x4s to run 14-2 uh, uh, household cabling, right? If you do that enough and you don't have a current limiter on there, you risk overcurrenting the batteries which may potentially heat up the pack. If the pack heats up too much this battery will get damaged and not only that but you could cause a thermal runaway which will cause this pack to explode. Yeah lithium right? Great stuff. Um, now if I'm not mistaken these packs here are using 18650 cells so let's, let's just check that quickly. Um, no I can't find my screwdriver. Here it is. <clears throat> so let's check this out. Now I'm willing to bet that they're 18650 so that's, that's the case 
you may actually be able to replace these packs with um, lithium, what is it, uh, Life Po 4. Lith 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 lithium iron phosphate, I believe. But yeah, no, I was extremely disappointed with this 18-volt uh, equipment when I was forced to go to it. And um, in fact, I've kept, I'm actually buying used 18-volt packs that are damaged. And I'm taking to them to my uh, company up in Lindsay there, BTW Electronics. And they're actually rebuilding my packs with nickel metal hydride cells. So um, yeah, I've had to do that because this is junk. So these are standard 18650s. See that? 18650 cells. Um, I think this is welded. I don't think I can actually get this apart. Let me just check. No, I'm not getting this apart easily, I don't think. So anyway, you can replace these with lithium iron phosphate uh, cells and uh, be able to get a hell of a lot more torque out of them than you would with this lithium ion garbage. So um, my recommendation to you, find a person who rebuilds these packs, get as many as you can, and get them rebuilt because you know what if you're working in a climate like we are in uh, southern Ontario in the summertime it gets as hot as hell sometimes as high as 35 Celsius consistent like 105 Fahrenheit and in the winter time we can get as low as negative uh, 30 and in some situations with wind chill you can get down to negative 40 and if that's the case you're not working anyway but these cells will just get destroyed you can't even leave them in uh, a truck on a hot seat you can't leave them in your truck overnight when it gets down to minus 20 because you risk damaging them. Um, that's where these cells are superior. They will take hell. And they will sit there and laugh and suck it up. So there you go, folks. <clears throat> and if you do this, by the way, be mindful of battery temperature when you're using this for heavy load. You want to make sure that you do not let these batteries get too hot. Um, the spot you're going to want to feel will be down in the bottom because that's almost flush against the battery, so it'll be good heat uh, thermal dissipation through the bottom of the pack, whereas there's an air gap on the sides for the cabling and welds. So, you know, check your pack every now and again if you're working hard, and if it does start to get warm, like eh, uncomfortably warm, take your pack and put it aside. Do not run these too hot, otherwise, otherwise you will damage them and potentially cause them to blow up. So there you go, folks. If you are, you're a suffering DeWalt user like me, um, that's the workaround to fix your drill packs, okay? All right, guys, there's my rant of pissed off edness and how to fix your DeWalt tool pack. Thanks, we'll see ya.